it's monday uh last week was insane i was just finishing this huge huge order so there is a wedding dress there's a skirt there's a cape there's two flower girl dresses there's three head pieces and it's all done and my client is on her way to pick it all up and um, she's given me permission to film everything and by the time this vlog goes up the wedding would have been done so i am not giving away any secrets here I've actually filmed a video about all of these dresses and headpieces and I'll share that video with you when I get the photos of the wedding. So she's having a big festival wedding over two or three days, I think. It sounds like it's going to be just incredible. So that's why there was no vlog, like this week. This week's vlog is two weeks. So I went to Enlighten last Monday and filmed there and then I have literally just been working on all of these pieces um so there was nothing to record so this i've kind of rolled them in together so you would have just seen enlighten and that was from literally a week ago and then i've just been sewing 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 all of this gorgeous stuff um this silver fabric i've actually got another piece of it we bought two pieces in case we needed a second piece and we ended up not needing it so i will do a video using that for something I love the flower skirt so much that I will do a video showing you how to do that. I think I'll do a video showing you how um, to make a sequin cape as well because that's come out really cool. Oh, look how sparkly it all is. Oh my gosh, she's here in like 20 minutes so I hope she loves it. And oh, and I just had a delivery. Let me show you that. So I've just had this beautiful silver lace delivered. I haven't even, all I did was open the end and have a quick look. Isn't that beautiful? That's going to go on. I'm going to do quite a sort of traditional for me wedding dress for the channel so it's going to have a silver sparkly bodice and then a big white fluffy tulle skirt and then to go with it i'm going to show you how i make a crown so i've got this little mini sparkly crown as a base and then i've got some earrings and i'm going to turn it into a big sort of fairy princess crown i've got this beautiful choker that i bought recently it's very gucci you've got lots of chokers like this at the minute and I think I'll put it with this. I think it'll suit that princess look. Oh, these are the earrings that I've bought. So they're going to sort of add on to the top of this little crown to make it into a big crown. So the, the plan for this week is after my client's been and picked everything up, assuming everything's okay, she takes it all today. Um, I've got no other work that I need to do this week apart from some emails and some quotes and things, which I'll get done today. So the next thing I'm going to do is film the beaded winged heart tutorial because when I when I made the Liberty dress originally for some reason um, I either didn't film that part properly or I've lost the footage or something so I'm just going to remake that and film a tutorial for how to do that and then I'm going to get started on that flower dress. So my client has just been, she's collected everything and uh, we tried everything on just to make sure she was happy with it all, just to do a double check of all the last fit and everything, make sure everything was fine. It's all been bagged and boxed and put safely in her car and the wedding is this weekend. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on social media to see how it all comes together. I can't wait to see it all. So next up, I'm going to go and have some lunch and then I'm going to come out and tidy this studio because my desk, after sewing like crazy for a week, is a complete mess. So we have a quick sort out before I move on to the next thing. Morning, everyone. I spent yesterday tidying, doing emails, doing order forms, doing quotes, uh, working on some of the um, titles and descriptions of my YouTube videos, which took forever. Um, so now it's Wednesday and I'm about to start making the beaded heart tutorial. So I'm going to film that this afternoon. So I've got out everything I need. For those of you who haven't seen, this is how I film my videos. So I'm kind of wedged behind my desk here. There's not a lot of room and I have to step around the camera. Um, one day I will redo my studio and rearrange it to make it easier to film. But for now, that's how I do it. So I've got two lights that I point down onto my desk. Oh, turn these on. Then I have my camera here on a tripod. So I've got everything out ready and I'm going to get this tutorial filmed. I've got it all finished and filmed. I've done half the editing already, so I'm just going to go in and do the rest of the editing now. And I'm hoping to get the video up tonight and get the blog post up tonight. So I've written a blog about the Liberty dress and why I chose to make it um, and more about the design. So the the heart and the wings are quite symbolic. So it tells you more about that in that. 
and I will put links to all that in the description of this video as well so you can go and check it all out and that's my last video for the Liberty dress all done now so I can start on the flower dress tomorrow which I'm going to call Flora today I'm getting started on the Flora dress and I've got everything out ready to start filming so I've got all my fabrics there ready to film all the embellishments and beads there I've got my roll of tulle down there which will be the sleeves um, I'm going to do this one in a little bit of a different style to how I've done making dress videos in the past. They've all had just music over them, but this one I'm going to talk more, give more detail. I'm going to split it into six parts. I've just worked out. So part one will be the toile and making the corset part. Part two will be making and attaching the skirt. Part three will be the sleeves and embellishment. Then there'll be headpiece, shoes, wig and makeup, and then the final sort of reveal of everything together and um, so I kind of haven't really worked out what people enjoy the most so let me know in the comments if you like me making videos where I talk or if you like the short video start to finish with the music and then the more in-depth tutorials that go along with it or if you think this sounds like a good idea let me know what you prefer and what you'd like to get out of my videos do you watch them just for inspiration do you watch, watch them because you sew and you want to know how to do stuff so um, let me know what's going on there. Got some extra buddy extra. Anyway, so um, let me show you my design. So this is my design for the dress, which I literally drew really roughly on a piece of paper when I first saw the um, floral tulle fabric online. So it's going to be heavily embellished at the top. It's going to be a full skirt. There's going to be tulle cape sleeves with embellishments at the top. And then there's going to be a gold crown at the top. So it's kind of representing spring, flowers, gardens. So I think the gold crown, it's like a sun. It's almost like the sunrise, the new day, new birth, new life. So this is the hoop petticoat that I'm going to use underneath this gown. Um, it's, a, it's got three hoops in it and then a little bit of net over the top and an elasticated waist. Um, it's not too big. It will just hold the bottom of the dress out nicely, sort of, in a similar shape to how I've drawn it and um, I pretty much always buy my petticoats I don't make them because they um, they take so long to make and by the time you've bought, bought all the materials you might as well just buy one that's ready made the only time I don't buy them is if I need something that's really specific shape and I can't find it then I'll make it and um, what I do often do though is because the hoops often show through the shape of them shows through depending on the fabric you use for big skirts I'll often make extra layers of net and just add to the these as a base just to make sure the hoops don't show through so once I've made this dress I'll decide then if I need to do that with this petticoat but I think we've got so many layers of fabric plus all the tulle on the top that um might not need to so yeah I'll put a link in the description to um, where you can buy petticoats you can get them on ebay and aliexpress pretty easily and um, you can get all sorts of different sizes i've often combined two petticoats to make them fuller i'll often change the length of things like the sort of fluffy hell bunny petticoats to be the length that i want as well so um but pre-made petticoats are a really good starting point to use as a petticoat instead of starting completely from scratch to start making this dress I'm going to use my standard size 12 corset pattern which I've got here I'm just going to cut it out quickly in calico and put it on the mannequin I think I want to take the waist in a little bit and I think I want it to stop higher so be shorter to below the waist before the skirt starts we can get that nice fullness so I find a nice curve on the waist and then the skirt starting not too low give into that fullness gives a really lovely silhouette and really emphasizes a nipped in waist just going to cut out a really quick um twirling in calico i'm not going to bone it or anything i'm just going to pop it on the dress form and have a quick look because i can see from there what i need to change so this is my twirl it's just a single layer of calico which i've sewn together with the correct seam allowance and then on this side i've just clipped around the curves of the waist and around the bust Okay, so I've got it pinned on my dress form. It's too big for my dress form, so I've just padded it really roughly and sort of pinned it into place so I can see the overall shape of it. See, without boning, it's all super floppy. You can see I've got a really nice curve there from the waist into the hip, and I'm just going to bring that waist in a tiny bit just to really exaggerate that in the final dress. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring it down here. So once I've taken the seam allowance off it, it'll be even lower. This is going to be my finished edge at the bottom. So the skirt will start from there. So we'll get that lovely flow from the curve of the waist out over the petticoat with the fullness of the skirt. Other than that, I'm happy with it. I know it's, it, you probably can't tell because it's all baggy and the seam allowances are sticking out, but because I've made this corset so many times, I know what the fit's like, so I can see just from it being all baggy and weird like this what I need to change. So I've traced my original size 12 pattern. I've changed the top. I've changed the waist. I've shortened it below the waistline as well. So now I'm going to just write what it is, the size, put all my grain lines and markings and things on there and get the pattern cut out. And then I can start cutting out the fabric for the corset. Okay, I have interfaced a piece of satin ready to cut my corset from. So I'm going to cut my inside and outside from the same satin. Um, I've actually cut it wider than I need because this is the end of the roll and there was some marks on it. So I've cut it sort of extra wide so I can move pieces up and down and avoid the marks as I cut it out. So to cut corsets out, because accuracy is everything with corsets, one or two mil difference can make the difference between it lying properly when it's all together or not. So once I've got it lined up, I'll draw around it with my purple pen and cut it out. And then that gives a way more accurate way of cutting it than pinning it on and cutting with scissors. Um, it does take longer, but for the accuracy, I find it worth it. And if there's any slight marks on them, I'll use that as the outside layer, which sounds crazy, but there's going to be sequins and then all the flowers over the top of it. So any slight marks will be hidden by all the layers that are going to go on top of it. And I'll keep the clean ones as the linings as the lining because they're the ones that will be seen. <laughs> I also cut just a single layer at a time because then again it if you cut two layers one can slide on the other as you're cutting them this again is the the most accurate way to get an exact copy of your pattern check for marks on this section i think this middle bit's okay it's not the most efficient way of cutting out but given that this whole end piece is covered in marks it's better than wasting the whole width of it If this was for a client, I would not use this piece at all, but because it's for a sample dress and for a video, I'm going to go ahead and use it. That piece is good. So we've got our first pair of backs. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the pieces for the lining and for the outside. And then I'll show you how I based it to my strength layers and to my sequin layers and, and get it ready to sew. I've cut out all of the satin for the corset. So it's all interfaced. I'm using the same satin inside and outside. So that pile is my lining. So that's the cleaner pieces. This side is the outside, which will have the sequins over the top. And that was the ones that had a couple of marks on from that end piece of the satin. But they're so minor that once the sequins and all the flowers are over the top, you won't even know they're there. So next, I have to tack the sequin layer onto these and tack a double layer of calico onto these ones. As I sew the lining together, I stitch the bone casings into the lining and then the boning will end up between the two layers of calico on the inside of this. Got all my pieces laid out on my calico and I've got the calico doubled over and I'm about to just tack them by hand into place and then cut around them. And I always use calico as my strength layer. Um, I never use coos heel. I know a lot of corset makers swear by it and there's a lot of purists who think that it can't be a corset if it's not made from coos heel, but I don't like it. I find it too stiff. I don't want my corsets to stand up on their own. And calico has always done the job for me. I've made tight lacing corsets with it and never had a problem. I think as long as you cut everything perfectly on the grain and make it really well, it's yeah perfectly fine to use. So... Don't feel like you've got to buy expensive fabrics to be able to make a corset. You can work with whatever you've got, really. Next, I'm going to tack satin side down these pieces onto the sequin fabric and then cut them out. Look how beautiful it looks. Look how sparkly it is. Oh my God, it's going to look so beautiful. I finished cutting both layers out. So this is my lining with the double calico on it. 
and this is my outside layer with the beautiful sparkly sequins on it i'm going to call it a night and tomorrow morning i've got to pop to the mall to get some thread to match i've got nothing that matches this creamy color and i want to look for some um earrings or jewels to go on the headpiece as well so i'm going to pop to the mall first thing and then i'm going to start sewing the corset together so i am back from the mall and i got what i needed i got my cream thread ready to sew the corset with um it's gutterman i only pretty much i only ever use gutterman because it's so much better than cheap threads you'll sew so much better with it um machine sewing machines often have problems with cheap threads so just buy the best buy gutterman and it will make your life a lot easier <laughs> Then I bought, I got these two necklaces from Colette, which were half price. So that cost me $25 for both of those. Um, I thought originally I was going to use those on the headpiece, but then I found these earrings in La Vista and I think these would actually work better. So these I'll just keep for something else. They'll get used. They'll just go in my stash. So I've got two pairs of these really long sort of gold filigree earrings with just little crystals in. They were reduced to $6 a pair. Then I've got some smaller gold filigree ones. So I've got two pairs the same. And then I've got these little leaf ones, which I think I'll put crystals and flowers on and use those as the actual earrings to style this. And they were three pairs for $12. So between that selection, I've definitely got enough to style this and to use on the headpiece. And then I got the shoes to upcycle as well. So these were $8 in Vinnie's and they're in my size. And they're the perfect sort of pinky nude base to use to add flowers and crystals to to go with the dress so i'm really happy with them really happy so i've got the lining all sewn together now and all of the bone casing stitched in i've got the label sewn in the hanging loops and i've got all of the outside together and pressed now as well i didn't get quite as far as i would have liked to today i've got a really busy weekend so i'm not going to get any sewing done this weekend so this is the end of this week's vlog. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.